Well, Happy New Year, friends and partners, family of Christ uh, around the world. Uh, what a beautiful New Year's Day, New Year's morning here in Arizona. And um, it's just here in the, in the 50s. Got a nice fire going on. And uh, please, uh, I want to just take a minute as, as you guys are entering the broadcast, and I want you to just let me know you can hear me okay before I go any further. What's up? Welcome, everybody. Give me a shout out. Let me know where you're watching from around the world. We just bless you in Jesus' name. We just declare New Year's blessings over you in Jesus' name. Can you all hear me okay? Let me know you can hear me okay, and then we'll go ahead and get going. Dana, how are you? Good morning. Okay, awesome. Well, I am really excited to be coming to you right now. Um, with this word. I believe it's going to refresh your spirit. I believe it's going to refresh your heart. And um, this is what the Lord has been speaking to me over the last week. And again, I've been, you know, sitting on it. I want to make sure it's the right timing. Uh, and originally I was going to release it before New Year's Day, but I really felt like let's, let's start off the new year together uh, with this just declaration of glory. And again, I believe you're going to be really encouraged and refreshed in Jesus' name. Um, so Happy New Year, everybody. And this is going to be an incredible year, of course, not without its challenges. But um, last year on February 22nd, 222, I had a dream and I saw this invisible enemy, if you will, kind of like radiation seeping into homes and workplaces and causing sicknesses. But I saw the church expanding and growing and strengthening through that. And I believe that we have seen that over this last year. And the word that I'm about to release to you, again, I believe it's going to infuse you with strength and courage, but it will also call you higher. It's also going to challenge you, right? I think that 2021 is going to be a year not where we just see a lot of calling out. There is going to be more exposure in the church uh, unto solutions so that people can get healed, but we're going to see calling up. We're going to see calling higher in Jesus' name. And so the word that the Lord gave me was, and I I want you guys to receive this. I want you to receive it deeply. I want you to receive it in your spirit, man. Protect your joy, okay? Protect your joy. This is what the Lord has been speaking to me. Um, in John 16, 22, Jesus said, you also now have sorrow, but I will see you again and your heart will rejoice and your joy no man shall take from you. And I feel like, you know, 2020 was a year where our joy was stolen. So many people, you know, that were just excited and looking forward to things that God was going to do. Their joy was just sucked away by the coronavirus or by whatever else, right? Um, and in the natural, uh, 2020 was a year of protecting our immunity, protecting our health, right? And so the church was never quite uh, at agree in agreement on what does that look like? What's the line between wisdom and fear, right? But uh, 2020 was a year in the natural of protecting our immunity, protecting our health. But 2021 is to be a year of protecting our joy, okay? So I want you to take this. I want you to take it personally. You need to protect your joy in this year because Jesus promises us a joy that no man can take from us. What's the joy? The joy of our salvation, right? The joy of our inheritance as children of God. So God is calling his children, just like me and you, to be part of a consecrated remnant, okay? And I want you to really get this deep in your spirits this year. And listen, there are gonna be people that mock this, okay? There are gonna be people that make fun of it. There always have been. There have been people that persecuted the prophets, and I'm gonna talk to you about that in a minute. But there were people that made fun of Noah when he was building the ark, and so on and so forth. So don't listen to the naysayers. Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. God is calling his children like me and you to be part of a consecrated remnant this year. And in that calling, what's going to happen is if you say yes, you and I, we are going to rediscover the joy of knowing Jesus and the joy of our salvation. And that's going to be a joy that no coronavirus, no election, no false words or whatever, words that didn't come to pass the way we thought they were going to come to pass, is going to be able to steal that joy from us. And one of the ways that you can partner with this word, because a lot of people, you know, it's easy to release a word, and then it's another thing to say, okay, how do we partner with that word? One of the ways that you can partner with, with this word is by asking the Holy Spirit to help you, to help us identify anything um, that we are reliant on, 
or that we are addicted to and we don't even realize it, okay? And, and now you might say, okay, where do you draw the line between legalism and, you know, religion, okay? So that's a good question. Just ask the Holy Spirit. I'm going to tell you, for me, for the last two weeks, I have not had one single drop or ounce of caffeine. Not that caffeine is evil, but I felt like the Holy Spirit revealed to me that I was relying on it. Instead of getting refreshed and energized by the Spirit of God, I was relying on caffeine. And I'm even sensitive to caffeine to begin with. And so here's the deal. Being part of a consecrated remnant whose joy cannot be stolen doesn't mean uh, that you have no fun and, and that you're not, you know, you have to look like the world in order to have some kind of fun. No, 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 no. It doesn't mean that. What it means is you're a slave to nothing. And this is what the heart of God is calling out right now. I want a people who are a slave to nothing. I don't care how silly it sounds. It might be caffeine. It might be food. I've been on my own journey the last few weeks, and I don't want to put that on you because I don't believe you have to have the same conviction as me, okay? But you have to ask the Holy Spirit. So here's a way that you can partner with this word. As you can say, Holy Spirit, show me anything, reveal anything to me that I'm reliant on, that I'm addicted to, other than the glory of God, that I am a slave to absolutely nothing. Amen? And that's, how, what, that's one of the ways that your joy will not be able to be stolen. Now, again, it's going to sound a little bit crazy, and the Holy Spirit might show you something, that, and, and you say, no, that's not possible. Don't speak too soon, because if the Holy Spirit's showing it to you, just have a radical shift in your inner man and move forward in the new creation reality that Jesus died to give you. Be a slave to nothing except his righteousness, okay? So in 2021, your joy, we, we need to protect our joy. How will we do that? How do we protect our joy? How do we partner with the word? Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you anything you are a slave to that is not the righteousness of Christ, okay? And put put it to death. You guys saw in my last video about not worshiping the creature and putting the creature to death. Amen. Um, so one of the other joy stealers that the Lord's been, been uh, ministering to me about is uh, confusion. A lot of people in 2020, confusion hit us so hard. Confusion hit the church. Um, we, we came out of 2020 feeling confused, feeling like God's going to deliver us, but he kind of never did, or did he, or like, who do I listen to? What voice do I listen to? What does it look like? Uh, confusion is a major joy stealer. And so what the Lord, uh, gave to me concerning confusion, um, is that confusion will lead us to despise what God is doing. Confusion will lead us to despise the prophetic. Confusion will lead us to despise the working of the Holy Spirit because we get so tired of trying to figure it out, trying to navigate it on our own, you know, under, saying, I don't really understand what God is doing, so I'm just going to give up. And we have to be really careful that we don't allow confusion to cause us to despise the call of God in our lives, to despise the scripture, to despise the prophetic ministry, especially, okay, because the prophetic ministry is in the midst of a great reform right now. And I will talk about that here in this video. But the direct instructions that the Lord gave to the Apostle Paul in Thessalonians was this. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 22. If you have your Bibles, open up old school. If not, I have it here and I have it written in my notes. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 22. Listen to this. I want you to take this. I want you to take it personal and, and just get it deep down in your spirit. Okay? Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. Right? This is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold fast to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. Okay? This is what we're looking at right now. So we will actually quench the spirit if we're not rejoicing always, if we're not praying continually, if we're not giving thanks in all circumstances, and we will end up despising the prophetic ministry. When God has, has, um, has birthed the prophetic ministry to bring a confirmation and establish and comfort his saints, right? We will end up despising it, and we've seen that all through 2020. Now, that doesn't mean that, that the prophetic doesn't need some reform, and uh, we'll talk about that in a minute, okay? But 
If you have a minute today, I want you to go to Isaiah chapter 38. And in Isaiah chapter 38, there's actually a story about Isaiah and Hezekiah, okay? And this is really interesting because uh, King Hezekiah, basically Isaiah prophesies to him that the Lord says, you're ill and you're not gonna recover. In fact, you are going to die. And then in the next verse, all of a sudden, the Lord says uh, the opposite. The Lord basically changes his mind because Hezekiah prays. And then Isaiah prophesies to him and says, oh no, actually the Lord says he's gonna add a bunch of years to your life and he's gonna deliver the land into your hands and so on and so forth. And so um, what I'm trying to say is there are things that the Lord does and says that look like confusion um, in the natural but it's actually the outworking of his plans and purposes. And this is what I really felt like the Lord said to tell you today, that um, the Lord would say that what looks like confusion to you is actually the outworking of my plans and my purposes. My ways are higher than your ways. Don't despise small beginnings and don't despise that which you cannot understand. Okay, if you go to the book of Acts chapter 21, there's this prophet Agabus. And uh, Agabus prophesies what would happen to the apostle Paul um, but you don't see the Apostle Paul trying to go and figure out how am I going to make this word come to pass and just following that word. Because when you follow the word solely, you end up with an unhealthy prophetic culture. You depend on the gifts of people rather than the spirit of God. So allow the prophetic word to confirm. OK, allow the prophetic word to confirm so that you don't end up despising the prophetic ministry. OK, so now listen, if prophets have prophesied falsely, they need to be held to account. They need to repent. Absolutely. I, I don't object to that at all. And I believe that that will happen. I believe this year that the prophets will be held fully accountable if they did prophesy falsely. Um, but don't allow your heart to sink. OK, now maybe in 2021, we will see more of uh, instead of so much predictive prophecy, maybe we'll actually see a little bit more of um, the poetry of God's heart being released. So instead of it being about dates and times, although sometimes it does need to be dates and times, it will be more of having our hearts really connected to his, making sure that we're releasing uh, what is on God's heart. And so, you know, in 1 Corinthians 14, 3, uh, Paul says, He that prophesies speaks unto men unto edification, exhortation, and comfort. And so there you go. Now that can include warning. That can include words of discipline, right? Because God loves us because he loves his children. But ultimately, I believe that we're going to see reform in the prophetic and less and less people will despise it because it will be edifying, it will be exhorting, and it will be comforting. Amen. Um, it doesn't say that he that prophecies always predict world events. They can, but more often or not, they actually bring comfort, exhortation, and they establish. So just let the Holy Spirit light a fresh fire in you right now for the prophetic ministry um, in Jesus' name. And then, uh, actually, let me just, I want to mention this real quick because this is really strongly on my heart. This is a word to you of my friends who are currently persecuting the prophets, okay? I want you to be really careful because Jesus talks about you <laughs> in, uh, in uh, Matthew chapter 5. And those who persecuted the prophets were basically the Pharisees. It's like, don't be no different than the Pharisees. Whether you agree with certain things or not, stop persecuting the prophets. Focus on the heart of Jesus. You can disagree Feel free to disagree without touting um, an obstinate attitude and making judgmental critics instead of making disciples. Sorry, my phone is like falling here. Um, we don't want to make critics. We want to make disciples. We don't want to make judgmental critics. We want to make disciples in Jesus' name. Amen. And so lastly, um, the other joy stealer that I really felt like the Lord told me to just talk about with you for a couple of moments is judgment. And there's been a lot of confusion again over judgment. And this, is, again, is another thing that causes people to despise prophecies and despise the prophetic. Um, judgment has been a joy stealer. So whether the coronavirus was, oh my goodness, my phone is like keeps falling. Let me put it down for a minute, guys. Sorry. Give me one second here. I'm going to put this down so my phone doesn't keep falling. Every, it's like every time I try to do these videos, I either can't get the fire started or something goes wrong or the phone stops working or, you know, it dies when it's fully charged. So in Jesus' name, we thank you for no issues. 
Um, whether the coronavirus was judgment of God or maybe you're just not, you know, you're tired of not being sure or understanding exactly how God's judgment works and you just feel burned out. Um, it's been a joy stealer for you. I feel like the Lord has a word for you specifically. I don't know why my phone just wants to continue falling here. Um, the Lord has a word for you specifically. The Lord's emphasizing in this hour that you must understand that there's a difference between the sin of judgment and the ministry of judgment. I'm going to say that again, the sin of judgment and the ministry of judgment. And so let's look at John 16, 8. It says, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will correct the world concerning sin, concerning righteousness, and concerning judgment. Okay, did you guys see that? So one of the jobs of the Holy Spirit is to set us straight when it comes to the area of judgment. Okay, and so that's something that we can actually expect the Holy Spirit to do. Um, one of the, the passions of the Holy Spirit is to correct us concerning God's judgment, concerning our judgment of ourselves, our judgment of people, not seeing people according to the flesh, etc., etc. Hey, guys, I'm in the direct sun, and it's actually like my phone's going black, so I hope you can still see me. Um, but there's a lot of different words for judgment in the Greek. There's krima, katakrino, krino, gnome, anakrino, diakrino, and they are used all throughout the New Testament. I'm just going to go ahead and hold the phone right now. Uh, they're, they're used all throughout the Old Testament, okay? And so this is why you hear people confused in their exegesis saying things like, well, who are you to judge? Well, we're not supposed to judge anybody, right? It's, it's, it, we, <laughs> okay, and it's not even a theological issue. It's kind of more of a, uh, an exegetical issue here, and we can talk about that a little bit more. But basically, um, I'll give you an example of 1 Corinthians 5.12. Paul says this, um, it isn't my responsibility to judge outsiders, but it certainly is our responsibility to judge those inside the church who are sinning. Okay, that's 1 Corinthians 5.12. But they confuse it with something like John 7.24. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. This is something Jesus said. Because there's a sin of judgment and there's a ministry of judgment. And they are not the same thing and they do not operate the same way. Okay, so it's really important to understand this. So when you feel like your joy is being stolen because of false judgment or you don't really know if something is judgment, healthy judgment, or how does the judgment of God work in the New Testament, um, I would say don't participate in the sin of judgment but the ministry of judgment is completely different. God seeks to restore and reconcile, and he has to draw a line in the sand. He has to separate because he loves us so much. Um, and, uh, and at times, cut things off, right? Because we don't want to just call people out. We want to call people higher. But your joy will be stolen if you confuse the sin of ministry with the ministry of judgment. I'm the sin of ministry. The ministry of sin. Oh, my gosh. The sin of judgment with the ministry of judgment. They are two completely different things. Um, the ministry of judgment judges and calls people higher, Okay, um, so if we confuse these things, our joy will be stolen. You might even fall into sin or lower your standards because you don't recognize the difference between these two things. So it's really important. But this is a year to call everyone around us higher, to consecrate ourselves fresh to the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. And what I want to do is I want to leave you with the scripture that Jesus gave me for the year 2021, and I'm going to open my, my big Bible to get to this because I think it's important to just really dig in there. I want you to go to John chapter 20, verse 21. Some of you probably could have guessed that one, right? John chapter 20, verse 21. I'm holding the phone because for some reason my stand decided not to work, and the phone was going black, but I've been believing God that we're, we're going to be able to get through this broadcast. John 20, 21. And here's what it says. Then Jesus said to them, peace be unto you. As my father has sent me, even though, even so I send you. So this, I want you to be full of his peace. I want you to be full of his peace. I want you to be full of his peace in 2021. There is a joy that is for you straight from Jesus. There is a peace that is for you straight from Jesus. And you're going to begin to understand 
the relationship between the Father and the Son, John 20, 21. As you receive of that peace, as you drink of that peace, you are going to begin to uh, have insight into the relationship between the Father and the Son and understand that just like the Father to the Son relationship, that's how your relationship is to God. He is in you. You are in Him. You are full of joy. You are full of peace in Jesus' mighty name. So we just release that word into you. I pray that this video builds you up. I pray that it edifies you in Jesus' mighty name. And if you've been persecuting the prophets, take a minute right now and repent. Have a radical shift in your inner man. Uh, if you've been doubting God, if you've been despising joy, peace, you've been despising ministry, you've been despising the prophetic, this is a new year. It is time to have peace and be sent like Jesus, just like the Father sent Jesus. It's a time to be sent in Jesus' mighty name. So again, confusion, joy stealer, okay? Um, a false understanding of judgment, joy stealer, okay? Remember these things that we talked about today. Go back and watch the video. Uh, please share this video if it's blessed you. And again, remember, just like last year, we protected our immunity and our health. This year, of course, we're still doing that, but protect your joy. Don't let anything or anyone steal your joy. Let's rise up. Let's call people, high, people higher, and let's consecrate ourselves to the Lord afresh. Let's drink of his new wine. Let's be fully drunk on his love. Our bodies are being healed. You're being set free. It'd be a slave to nothing but his righteousness in Jesus' mighty name. All right? I love you guys so much. I've got a brand new book that's about to be released here the end of January, Happy Holiness, The Rise of Redemptive Reformers. And... Um, I'm really hoping and praying it's going to help just serve to facilitate reformation in the church of Jesus. If you guys feel it on your heart to donate to the ministry, you can go to glorybomb.com and uh, click the give button and all the, uh, the info is there. Also, if you feel called to be a member of our Church 14, that, that means you partner monthly and you get our Bible school and Zoom calls and it's kind of our online community. You can just go to church14.com. All right. Love you all so much. Appreciate you. Uh, listen, don't be confused. Don't have a false understanding of judgment. All the things we talked about, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you, and um, you're going to be led and guided into all truth, okay? Don't despise the prophetic. The greatest days are ahead. Love you all, and we'll talk to you soon.